Um, and some of them are going to sound like, well, you've heard it before, but uh, it's you know, worth re-emphasizing. I think the first is uh, you need to work, if you, if, depending upon how well you want to do, and particularly if you're starting a company, you need to work super hard. So what, what does super hard mean? Um, well, when my brother and I were starting our first company, uh, in, instead of getting an apartment, we just rented a, a small office and we slept on the couch. Uh, and we, we showered at the, the YMCA. And uh, we're, we're so hot up, we had just one computer. So the, the, the website was up during the day uh, and I was coding at night. Seven days a week, all the time. Um, and I, I uh, sort of briefly had a girlfriend in that period. And in order to be with me, she had to sleep in the office. So. Uh, Work hard, like, it, it, I mean, every waking hour. That's that's the the thing I would I would say if if you particularly if you're starting a company, um, and I mean if you do simple math, say like okay if somebody else is working 50 hours and you're working 100, uh, you'll get twice as done as much done in the course of a year as the, as uh, the other company. Uh, the the other thing I'd say is that um, if if you're creating a company or if you're joining a company. Uh, the most important thing is to uh, attra is to attract great people. So either be with, join a group that's amazing that you really respect, or if you if you're building a company, you've got to gather great people. I mean, all a company is is a group of people that have gathered together to create a product or service. And so, depending upon how talented and hardworking that group is, and the degree to which they are focused uh, cohesively in in a good direction, that will determine the success of the company. So. Do everything you can to, to gather great people uh, if, if you're creating a company. Um, then I'd say focus on, on signal over noise. Um, a lot of companies get, get confused. They, they spend money on things that don't actually make the product better. So for example, at, at Tesla, we've, we've never spent any money on advertising. Um, we, we put all of the money into R&D and, and manufacturing and design to try to make the car as good as possible. Um, and uh, I, th I think that's, that, that's the way to go. So f for, for any given company, just can, can keep thinking about, are these efforts that p people are, are expending, are they resulting in a better product or service? And if they're not, stop those efforts. Um, and then the, the, the final thing is, is to sort of, is, is don't, don't just follow the trend. So. Um, you may have heard me say it to, to, that it's good to think in terms of the, the physics approach of first principles, uh, which is rather than reasoning by analogy, you boil things down to the most fundamental truths you can imagine and you reason up from there. And this is a good way to figure out if, if, if something really makes sense or if it's just what everybody else is doing. Um, and it, it's, it's hard to think that way. You can't think, think that way about everything takes a lot of effort, uh, but if you're trying to do something new, it's the best way to think. Um, and that framework was developed by, by physicists to figure out counterintuitive things um, like quantum mechanics. So it's really a powerful, powerful method. Um, and uh, anyway, so that's, and, and then I think that the final thing I would encourage you to do is now is the time to take risk. Uh, you don't have, <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't have, you don't have kids. Uh, you, your obligation. Oh, well, sorry. <laughs> you probably don't have kids. Um, the, 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 uh, but, but as you as you get older, your obligations increase. So you, the, and once you have a family, you start taking risk not just for yourself but for your family as well. It gets much harder to uh, do things that might not work out. Um, so now is the time t to do that. Uh, before you before you have those obligations, so I would I would encourage you to take risks now. Do something bold. Um, you won't regret it. Thank you. Um, I think certainly uh, being focused on something that you're confident will have high value to someone else, um, and just being really rigorous in making that assessment, um, mm -hmm. because people are tend, tend to a natural human tendency is wishful thinking. Um, mm -hmm. So a, a challenge for entrepreneurs is to say, well, what's the difference between really believing in your ideals and sticking, sticking to them versus pursuing some unrealistic dream that right. doesn't actually have merit? 
and it's it's that is a it, that is a really difficult thing to to tell. You, can you tell the difference between those two things? Right. You know? So you need to be sort of very rigorous um, in in your self uh, self analysis. Um, I think certainly extremely tenacious, uh, and um, and then just work like hell. I mean, you just have to put in, you know, eighty hour, eighty to hundred hour weeks every week. Gosh. And it's then a lot of work. That, that, that all those things improve the odds of success. Okay. Um, right. I mean, if, 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 if other people are putting in 40 hour work weeks and you're putting in 100 hour work weeks, then even if uh, you're doing the same thing, you know that in, in one year you will achieve what they achieve. You, you, you will achieve in four months what it takes them a year to achieve. Okay. And then. Uh, I think it's also important to reason from first principles rather than by analogy. So the normal way that we conduct our lives is we, 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 we reason by analogy. Um, it's, we're doing this because it's like something else that was done mm -hmm. or it's like what um, other people are doing. Me too type but, ideas. Yeah, it's slight, well, it's, it's, yeah, it's slight iterations take, yeah. on, on, on a theme mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, and, and it's because it, it's 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 kind of mentally easier to reason by analogy rather than from first principles. But by first principles is kind of a physics way of looking at the world, and what that really means is you kind of boil things down to the most fundamental truths, and and say, okay, what are we sure is true, or or as sure as possible is true, and then reason up from there. Mm -hmm. uh, that takes a lot more mental energy. Um, Give me but, an example of that. Like, what's one thing that you've you've done that on that you feel has worked for you? Sure. So, um, somebody could say, um, in fact, people do, uh, that factory packs are really expensive, and that's just the way they'll always be because that's the way they've been in the past. Um, you're like, well, no, that's that's pretty dumb, you know, because if if uh, if you applied that reasoning to anything new, that ha then you, you wouldn't be able to to ever. Uh, get to that new thing. Right. Um, so, um, you know, it's like you can't say, oh, you know, horses, well, nobody wants a car because horses are great and we're used to them and they can eat grass and there's lots of grass all over the place and, you know, there's not like a, there's no gasoline that people can buy so people are never going never get, never to get cars. Right. Um, but people did say that, you know. Um, and, and, and for batteries, they, they would say, oh, it's going to cost you know, in the, historically, it's cost six six hundred dollars per uh, six hundred dollars um, uh, per kilowatt hour, and so it's not going to be much better than that in the future. And you say, no, okay, well, what what are, what are the batteries made of? So, so first principle is we say, okay, what are the material constituents of the batteries? Mm -hmm. What is the spot market value of the material constituents? So you can say, okay, it's got cobalt, nickel, aluminum, carbon, um, and some polymers for separation, and a steel can. So break that down in, or on a material basis and say, okay, what if we bought that in London Metal Exchange? What would each of those things cost? Like, oh, geez, uh, it's like eighty dollars uh, 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 per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So clearly, you just need to think of clever ways to take those materials and combine them into the shape of a battery cell, and you can have batteries that are much much cheaper than anyone realizes. Like, first of all, I'd say starting a business is not for everyone. You know, so uh, generally, starting a business, I'd say number one is have a high pain threshold. <laughs> That's it. Um, there's a friend of mine who's got a good saying, which is that starting a company is like eating glass and staring into the abyss. Okay, that's um, that's generally what happens because um, when you first start a company, there's lots of optimism and things are things are great, and then so happiness at first is high. Then you encounter all sorts of issues. Uh, and happiness will steadily decline, <laughs> and then you'll go through a whole world of hurt. <laughs> That's, and then eventually, you'll, if you succeed, and in most cases you will not succeed, um, and, and Tesla almost didn't succeed, came very close to failure, um, then if, if you succeed, then after a long time, you will finally get back to happiness. <laughs> I think two is you've got to make sure that that you that whatever you're doing is a great product or service. It, it has to be really great. And I go back to what I was saying earlier, where um, if you're a new company, I mean, unless it's like some new industry or or new market that 
if it's an untapped market, or then then uh, you have more ability to you, this this the standard is lower for your product or service. But if you're entering anything where there's an existing marketplace against large entrenched competitors, then your product or service needs to be much better than theirs. It can't be a little bit better because then you put yourself in the shoes of the consumer and they say, why would you buy it as a consumer? You're always going to buy the trusted brand unless there's a big difference. So a lot of times, uh, you know, an entrepreneur will come up with something which is only slightly better. Um, and it's, it's not, it can't just be slightly better. It's got to be a lot better. Uh, number three, I'd say, is constantly seek criticism. Uh, a a well a well thought out critique of whatever you're doing is as valuable as gold, um, and you should seek that from everyone you can, but particularly your friends. Um, usually, your friends know what's wrong, but they don't want to tell you because they don't want to hurt you. Um, so I'll lift you up, so I'll lift your. Yeah. yeah. So they, you know, they say, "Oh, I wouldn't encourage my friends, so I'm, t I'm not going to tell him what I think is wrong with this product." Yeah. It doesn't mean your friends are right, uh, but very often they are right, mm. um, and you at least want to listen very carefully to what they say. And to everyone, if you're looking for, basically, you, you should take the approach that that you're wrong, um, you know, that, or that that you, the entrepreneur, are wrong. Your goal is to be less wrong. I think a successful entrepreneurs probably come in all sizes, shapes, and flavors. Um, I'm not sure there's any one, one particular thing. Um, uh, for me, you know, some of the things I've described already, are, I think, are very important. I think uh, really uh, an, an obsessive uh, nature with respect to the quality of the product um, is, is very important. Uh, yeah, so, you know, being obsessive compulsive is, is a good thing in this context. Um, uh, r really, r really liking what you do, what, whatever area that you get into, um, given that, you know, even if you're, if you're the best of the best, there's always a chance of failure. So I think it's important that you really like whatever you're doing. Uh, if, if you don't like it, life is too short. Um, you know, I, I'd say, if, if, and, and also if, if you, if you like what you're doing, you think about it even when you're not working. I mean, you, you're, it'll just, it, it's, it's something that your mind is drawn to. Um, and, and if you don't like it, you, you just really can't make it work, I think. Yeah. That third failure in a row, did you think, I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Eight weeks later, Musk bet the company on another flight. We have liftoff. And this time around, everything worked. Perfect. If that fourth launch hadn't worked, that would have been it. Um, we would have not had the resources to mount a fifth.